Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to your first tutorial on binary search trees. So I went ahead and just sketched what a binary search tree data structure kind of looks like over here. And so this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the basic structure or the basic components of a binary search tree. I'll talk about some properties related to a binary search tree. And then I'll introduce some terminology or keywords that we use to describe binary search trees. So if you notice this tree that I've drawn over here, the basic building block of this tree are these little blue circles with these two little arrows that come out of them. And so we call one of these things a node, and our nodes have the ability to hold a value, and they also have the ability to point to two other nodes in the tree. So I haven't written any values inside of these nodes, but you can think of each of these nodes here to have the ability to hold a number. And specifically, when we actually write this code, we're going to have our nodes store an integer value. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at these nodes over here. So I'll just go ahead and draw a circle really quick. So this circle is going to represent our node. So let's go ahead and define the properties of this node now. So in C++, we can type struct. And then we'll go ahead and name our struct node. And then we'll do an opening curly brace. And then inside of this curly brace, we're going to define the properties of this node. So we want our nodes to be able to hold an integer value. So we're just going to put an integer variable inside of each node here. So we type int. And then I'll just go ahead and name this variable data. And so now, every time we type in the word node, our program will know we're talking about an object that has the ability to hold an integer value inside of this variable named data. So now our nodes have the ability to hold some data. So the next thing we want to do is we want our nodes to be able to point to two other nodes in the tree. So we need to create two pointers here. And so the way we do that inside of this definition here is we just type in node and then star. And then we'll go ahead and name the first one left. And then for the second node pointer, we'll type node star. So node star just is the variable type for node pointer. And then we'll type in right. And end that with a semicolon. And then we'll go ahead and end the struct with a curly brace and a semicolon. So now we have just defined our binary search tree node. And our nodes can now hold some data, and they can point to two other nodes via their left and right pointers. So now that I've explained that the node is the basic building block of a binary search tree, let's talk about the properties of a binary search tree. So the properties of a binary search tree are pretty simple, and it really has to do with the data or the values that are stored in each node. So let's just go ahead and put that data variable in here. So we have some data in here. So you could think about it as the number 25, you could think about it as the number four, just know that data is storing some integer value. So the property for a binary search tree is that all of the nodes that are attached to the left pointer are going to be less than the value that is stored in the data variable of this node right here and all the nodes in the right subtree, or the ones that are connected by the right pointer, are going to be greater than the value that is stored in the data variable of this node right here. So for example, if I had the number 12 right here, that means that all of these right here, all of these nodes that are a subtree connected to 12's left pointer, all of these values in here have to be less than the value 12. And on the right hand side, that means that all of these nodes here in the subtree that are connected to 12's right pointer, those are all going to be greater than the value 12. And that's going to be true for every single node in the tree. So for example, if I wanted to put a value here, it has to be less than 12. So I could say something like seven, that means that everything that's connected to this part right here has to be less than seven, and everything that's to the right of this has to be greater than seven. But then we have to remember that even though it's greater than seven over here, 
it still has to be less than 12. Anything past this point has to be somewhere between 7 and 12. Anything over here has to be less than 7. So anyway, this property holds for every single node in the tree. So all of the nodes in the subtree that are connected to the left pointer are going to have a value less than the data in this node right here. And all of the nodes in the subtree connected to the right pointer are going to have a value greater than the value in this data variable of the node we're looking at. So now that we've talked about the properties of a binary search tree, let's just look at some terminology. So the terms that I want to cover here for the binary search tree are the terms root, parent, child, and then finally leaf. So these are just some important keywords that we need to understand when we're talking about binary search trees. So all four of these keywords here describe a node. So the root node is going to be the node at the very top. So we'll just kind of put a pointer right here and then I'll just put root. And so we'll actually have a root pointer for our binary search tree. And so all this is, it's not a node, it's just a pointer that's going to mark the top of the tree. And so this is going to be the root pointer pointing to the top of the tree, which we call the root node. So the parent now describes the relationship between two nodes. So for example, 12 is the parent of seven because the 12 node is connecting to the seven node with one of its pointers. So if we wanted to have something here, we could have the number 20 here since it's greater than 12. 20 would be the child of 12 and 12 would be the parent of 20. So, so far right here, we have 12 is the parent of seven, 12 is the parent of 20. On the other hand, seven is the child of 12 and 20 is the child of 12 because they are connected one level down here. So the last term that we wanna talk about is leaf. So a leaf, I'll just put L's in the leaf nodes here. So that's a leaf, this is a leaf, that is a leaf and this one right here. A leaf node is a node that does not connect to any other nodes via its left and right pointers. It's connected to the tree via its parent nodes pointer, but it doesn't point to any nodes itself. So the leaf nodes do not have any children. Every node except for the root node has a parent and then every leaf has a parent but doesn't have any children. So anyway, I think that was a pretty good introduction to binary search trees. We talked about the basic structure or the basic building block of the binary search trees, which are these nodes that have the ability to hold some data. And they also have the ability to point to another node via their left pointer and another node via their right pointer. Then we talked about the properties of a binary search tree. All of the nodes in the subtree connected to a node's left pointer are going to have values less than the data value inside of that node. And all of the nodes on the subtree connected to a node's right pointer are going to have values greater than the value that is stored in that node that we're looking at. And then we talked about root, parent, child, and leaf terms. And so now we know what all of that is. So in the next tutorial, I'll explain how we add nodes to a tree. Stay tuned for that tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Have an excellent day. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.